Hello and welcome to the CBT Nuggets Exam 70-667 Exam Pack, Microsoft SharePoint 2010 Configuring. My name is Tim Warner and I'm honored to be your trainer for this training series. Let's have a look at our game plan for this introductory nugget. We're going to cover the following ground. First, I'm going to give you a primer on SharePoint certification. Not only the current generation of SharePoint 2010, but also how these current certifications tie into the previous SharePoint Server 2007 and Windows SharePoint Services 3.0 certification exams. I'll then describe to you best practice suggestions on how you can derive as much bang for your buck and your time an effort of course in studying this course. After that I'll share with you some specific schematic information regarding the 70-667 certification exam and offer you some useful strategies to that end. Let's get to work. About SharePoint certification, Microsoft's baseline IT certification is called MCTS. This stands for Microsoft Certified Technology Specialist. And the way they have the MCTS credential set up is that you can gain your TS certification in a variety of different Microsoft technologies. It used to be before Microsoft revised their certification program that you would pass a single exam and become what's called a Microsoft Certified Professional. I think Microsoft Microsoft realized that that was a bit too vague. We as IT professionals want to be able to document the specifics of our IT skill set for showing to potential employers, clients, and so forth. Therefore, with the MCTS program, as I said, you could earn this credential in SharePoint 2010, Microsoft Exchange 2010, Windows Server 2008 Administration, .NET Software Development, Windows, Web, or both, SQL Server 2008, the list goes on and on. Of course, we're concerned with the SharePoint 2010 titles, and there are two of them at the technology specialist level. Of course, we're concerned with SharePoint administration. This is our current exam under discussion, 70-667. Once you pass that exam, you become a Microsoft Certified Technology Specialist in SharePoint 2010 Configuration and Administration. Microsoft has historically given not just SharePoint administrators, but also SharePoint developers a slice of the pie. If you are interested in certifying your skills as a .NET developer in SharePoint technologies, the TS exam for that is 70-573, and this qualifies you as a SharePoint application developer. One important difference between SharePoint 2010 certifications and SharePoint 2007 ones is that in 2007, we didn't have the Microsoft Certified IT Professional, or MCITP, credential. The ITP is Microsoft's premier or top-level certification. Again, you can earn your ITP in a variety of Microsoft products and technologies. Now in SharePoint 2010, once you pass the 667, you have to have this one under your belt, you can pass the 7668 exam to become a certified Microsoft SharePoint 2010 Administrator. Analogously speaking, on the application development front, there's a pro exam called 70-576 that certifies you as a SharePoint 2010 Designer and Application Developer. Now, quite honestly, as of this recording in late 2010, these titles, MCTS, MCITP, are not as well known as the old school MCP and MCSE, Systems Engineer is the second one, titles are. So if you go to dice.com or some other IT-centric job search board, you'll gradually start to see job descriptions that mention these new titles. But frankly, it's going to take a while before hiring managers certainly non-technical human resources people, really begin to identify these titles. But Microsoft has certainly dug their heels in with these, and they're not likely to change anytime soon, so please don't be afraid to exert the blood, sweat, and tears necessary to study for and pass these tests. SharePoint Certification Evolution. I think it's instructive for me to share with you a comparison contrast study between the current SharePoint 2010 credentials and the ones that Microsoft has published to support the Microsoft Office SharePoint Server or MOS 2007 and Windows SharePoint Services WSS3. 
The first point we actually covered in the previous whiteboard. With SharePoint Server 2007, there's no top tier or premium level credential, namely the MCITP. You could earn your MCTS in MOS 2007 and or WSS 3.0, but there was no top tier. Another important distinction is that in 2010, there's no separation between the freely available SharePoint Foundation and the full-fledged SharePoint Server 2010 premium product. The previous generation of SharePoint was, as I've repeated several times, Windows SharePoint Services 3.0, which is a free download from Microsoft and actually comes standard with later editions of the Windows Server 2008 operating system. Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2007, also called MOS 2007, is the enterprise version that builds upon the WSS foundation. Maybe that relation of WSS being foundation to MOS 2007 is why Microsoft now calls the successor to WSS3 SharePoint Foundation. But anyway, Microsoft probably moreover figured that they're going to just take all of the technology skills that are involved in any kind of SharePoint administration and roll them into a single title. I think it makes sense, quite frankly. Now, is it worthwhile you're pursuing the WSS or the MOS 2007 titles? Well, I do want you to know there's no upgrade path from the previous version. So if you're starting from scratch, I would suggest you go directly to what we're studying now, the 667 exam, and certify on SharePoint 2010. It's a little bit surprising to to see Microsoft announcing this retirement so early. On the Microsoft Learning website, they've published that the 70-631 test, this is the one on WSS3 configuration, is scheduled to retire on March 31st, 2011. Hmm, it's kind of disappointing, quite frankly, but it's the way of the Microsoft certification world. The third point that I need you to understand, and of course this whiteboard is geared primarily to folks who either A, have some previous experience with MOS 2007 and or WSS3, and or individuals who have one or both of those previous version MCTS titles. But nonetheless, I want you to understand that when SharePoint 2010 land, we have much more content to cover. The best way I can describe the content coverage on the exam proper for the MOS 07 and WSS3 skill set is that it was narrow and deep. I got the impression and I'm just speaking as an outsider to Microsoft Learning, I wasn't involved in any of these exam developments, of course, that the exams didn't cover every single feature of SharePoint 07 or WSS3, but the ones that they did cover, Microsoft asked very in-depth technical questions, such that if you went into your 70-631 or 70-630, that's the MOS 2007 exam, if you went in there without having some really in-depth depth practical knowledge of those platforms, then you are very likely to fail that exam. By contrast, in SharePoint 2010, the current 667 exam, I would describe the content coverage as being wide and shallow. Now, the folks at Microsoft Learning probably wouldn't be too happy me describing their exam as shallow, but it's true, frankly. You have to know a little bit about every feature in SharePoint 2010. I earned my first Microsoft certification in 1997, and I remember taking a Microsoft official curriculum, or mock class, in Windows 95 support, and that was one of the best and first lessons I ever received on tackling Microsoft certification exams. The Microsoft certified trainer that I had for that class described the Windows 95 support exam in the same way that I'm describing the SharePoint 2010 one. You have to know a little about every technology in the product, and when you're coming to this brand new with no previous experience in SharePoint, yes, it's daunting. There's no question about it. Individuals who have some prior experience with the previous version of SharePoint are certainly at an advantage here. However, and I'll expand on this in the next whiteboard, I am in no way, shape, or form going to leave you SharePoint newbies out in the dust. How this course works. The first thing I always say when I reach this point of any CBT Nuggets course that I teach is that I structure the Nuggets in a series strictly on the certification vendor's published list of exam objectives. So what we see on the right of this whiteboard is a run of all 20 nuggets in this series and you'll notice that in many cases 
The subject matter is too broad to fit in a single nugget, so we wind up splitting that coverage over two nuggets in the form of part one and part two. So we're on obviously on nugget one. We'll then start with installing and performing upgrades and initial configuration of SharePoint, and then we go into farm configuration, service application configuration, index and search, operational settings and security, accounts and users, authentication, web app, site collections. It's a really broad, as I said, range of technology departments, shall we say, with respect to SharePoint 2010. So I have some tips for you, actually, but before we get into these specific tips on how you can best maximize your study with this course, let's go out onto the web. First website you should always be aware of as a Microsoft certification candidate is the Microsoft Learning website at microsoft.com forward slash learning. I really like the way that they have their navigation set up. You can search by certification, by training. If you're just brand new and getting started, you can read about certification. What I'd recommend you do is go under certification by product technology, and then you can see the portfolio of products that Microsoft offers certification for. Of course, we're interested in SharePoint Server. And on this page, Microsoft goes on to give us handy links to examine the technology specialist or MCTS titles, there's the ITP or the Microsoft professional level and then there are even two above that the Microsoft certified master and Microsoft certified architect both of those are beyond our scope I also wanted you to see what an exam objective page looks like. This is the Microsoft Learning page for exam 667, our technology specialist or TS exam, SharePoint 2010 configuring. And if we go under skills measured, you'll notice we go through these sections and Microsoft is kind enough now, they used to not do this, give you a relative weighting of each portion of the outline. So an installation and configuration is 25% of the exam. Managing a SharePoint environment is 26, working with applications 24, and then performance tuning, troubleshooting, and maintenance is 25. So this is pretty much evenly spaced in four basic sections. And you'll notice that the outline starts with deploying new installations, configuring farms, configuring service applications. That should be no surprise to you because I just showed you how we structure the nuggets of this course. I also, just for the sake of comparison and interest, wanted to show you the exam page for exam 70-630. This is the SharePoint Server 2007 configuration test. And I just wanted to buzz through the outline here so you can see what's going on. Again, the percentages are given, and at first blush you think, wow, look at this. They're breaking things down in topic areas 15 or 16 percent per. So at first blush there seems to be a lot of information here. But really the basic technologies, SharePoint technologies, that are covered don't really hit every single aspect of the server. This is a much more compact outline than we saw in SharePoint 2010. And as I mentioned a couple of times, the degree of depth, you might even call it picky or picayune depth that Microsoft gets into on these questions is pretty crazy. Now then, tips for maximizing your study time with this course. I often get asked by students, should I watch your nuggets in any old order or should I watch them sequentially? Well, if you have quite a bit of experience with SharePoint 2010, I can see that you would want to jump in, say, right into index and search here. Maybe that's something that you've been challenged with in your live SharePoint installations at work and you want to get to the good stuff. I would say if you're not interested in passing the exam, you just need quick information for applying directly in your current role at work, then sure, go for that. But if for maximum learning, I would recommend that you watch the nuggets sequentially. And there's a couple reasons for that. I record these nuggets and teach in such a way that I like to build knowledge incrementally. So as we proceed through the course, we're building foundation knowledge and building on top of it. And by the time you're midway, three quarters of the way through the course, you've amassed a pretty large content snowball, so to speak, that's amassed a lot of, well, mass <laughs> and volume over the course of your time invested. Also, you'll find that I introduce, or include I should say, many cross-references in the training. So if you just were to dive into index and search, you might hear me reference, not explaining, but simply cross-referencing skills and procedures that I showed you in previous nuggets. And if you haven't watched those previous nuggets and studied them, you might feel a little bit out of the loop. You see what I mean? So those are the main reasons why I would recommend you watch the nuggets sequentially. Second, and this is 
is really crucial. It's not going to do you all that much good just to watch me do demos and to listen to my voice describe these concepts to you. You really need to practice, I would recommend, in a virtual machine environment.